Hey fam, welcome back to Yugi Pools and Merry Christmas Eve. I just wanted to thank everyone for your patience as well. Uh, I haven't uploaded a video in quite a while, but uh, October, November, and December were some pretty big life event months for me. So I got married, I went on honeymoon. Um, it's actually partially why we're doing this re uh, remote uh, virtual deck profile is because, I mean, I just got back. I want to be uh, COVID conscious here in terms of being around anti meta Knight, who piloted this deck for in place 48th place in the remote dual extravaganza. And for anyone else keeping up with current Yu-Gi-Oh, there was on the 20th, and a 250 player plus remote dual extravaganza that went oh, um, nine rounds of Swiss at over 14 hours for the event. And I don't know if anyone else is doing the math at home, but that is a lot of derpy frogs telling people no and stealing their cards, like, all day, which is which is terrible, because that's what the image we're looking at here, too. Um, I think you said there were over 24 cards you stole? Uh, yeah, over that, yeah, because I reused a couple of these note cards uh, a couple times. So, yeah, definitely was more than 24, because that's how many note cards are on the screen right now. Uh, <laughs> crazy. Well, hey, so um, I know also we did do a failure of frog profile a little bit earlier, I think maybe two or three uploads ago. Uh, you can check that out here. That was more driven by what we're seeing in locals, but there has been some meta changes that we can talk through when we go through the card by card um, that really drove this deck profile uh, for the Road Duel Extravaganza. Um, do you have anything else to add on this? I think there's a note card here. What is that the list of things you played against the other decks? Yeah, those were all my matchups throughout the day. Uh, so as you may see, if you look closely at it, uh, it's... Primarily Eldritch builds. It seems people are incorporating Eldritch into everything, and my side deck. That gold work is flashing everything. Yeah, it's uh, Eldritch generates a lot of advantage. Every card replaces itself for another card, so uh, people like playing it. Cool. Well, I guess uh, without any further ado, let's get into the card by card. Okay, cool. So we see your forty-two card deck here, and uh, if you want to start us off with a Ronin Totem. Yeah, as, as you can see. Um, my OCD makes me organize these a certain way. But uh, yeah. traditional frog uh, ratios, we have our Ronin Totems, our Duke Frogs, oh, and our Swag Frogs. Tech. <laughs> and then our extra frogs, uh, Great Slime Jr., he's an honorary mm -hmm. frog. Um, he gets sent to the grave with Swap Frog and uh, brings back another Great Slime Jr., just helps you keep up uh, in terms of card advantage. Uh, Ash, it's probably the best hand trap of the format. Uh, debatable with one of the other side deck cards um, but this is very good at stopping every deck at some point so uh, three ash three imperm um, the way i play this deck uh, is minimal hand traps uh, i like to let my opponent use their resources and then break it apart uh, so i'm actually thinking of taking out the imperms uh, for in, in future builds for other stuff but it is in there it was in there for today uh, because in some cases you can imperm a normal summon and end an opponent's turn. Uh, that's not the case so much with most of the meta decks right now. Right. I was going to say, imperm is just not the card it once was. Like At least in this meta, this particular meta, with the latest ban list. I, I think it, it's good, but it's there's just better tech cards out there than uh, imperm. I considered not playing it for the event, um, but uh, Shenshin, the virtual world synchro, is uh, pretty strong, so I wanted to be able to turn it off. And I wanted to be able to trigger Paleo Traps from the Grave at any time, and this is one of the easiest cards to trigger. It sure. also is pretty strong at negating spells and traps. I probably only ever did it two or three times throughout the entire event, but each time it was it was impactful to the game. So mm -hmm. um, it does occasionally come up, especially when your strategy is set five pass and your opponent plays spells and traps wherever because you have five back row. Yeah. Uh, as for Man, did anyone drop Zinko on you? I did actually. Yes. Uh, my very my second to last opponent, uh, Virtual World. He cited Danko. He dropped it on me, but Ooh. he wasn't very smart. <laughs> he had a set imperm on his side of the field. When he normal summoned it, and so he had his face up Shenshin, his imperm. I had no monsters, so his Danko was dead. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, you have a set card. And I don't care about Danko Seca. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was like, all right, we're just going to go ahead and pick apart your board. We'll book a moon your, 
stuff and steal other stuff and just pop off. It was crazy. The, the guy did not think that one through. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you could activate um, Imperm on a Dinko and then kind of just keep going about your normal play. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could have uh, if he but happened to have a chainable uh, set trap card. But in that case, he, he actually tried to Imperm his own Chen Chen. I said, uh, bro, read the card. Target one face up monster your opponent controls. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, getting more into Yugi players actually reading cards. Come on. <laughs> like, wait, uh, and there happened to be a judge watching us at the same at time when this happened. And he turned to the judge, he's like, Judge, is that true? I can't do per my own monster? He's like, uh, Yeah, read the card. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Minimal Paleo uh, Engine. Um, I only played the most impactful ones, which are mm -hmm. three Canadian, because you can usually stop players. Uh, with one Canadia. Um, in the uh, for virtual world, uh, most of the times if you book a moon their normal summon, their turn ends. So mm -hmm. assuming they did not open the spell card that plays Chen Chen or Chu Chu for them. Um, three MST, uh, virtual world it helps. So no Dino Mitchus? Are we just not wanting were you like trying to keep your card advantage up? Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of it. Um, so mm -hmm. this deck wins with card advantage. So as you noticed, I steal a lot of my opponent's cards. Uh, that's always a plus one. Your opponent loses a card, you lost a card, but then you gained a card of theirs, so you went plus one. So mm -hmm. uh, that every time you steal stuff, it's plus one. Dino Mistress is always a minus one, and it makes you hold stuff in your hand that you usually would rather set. So I didn't right. want to play Dino Mistress in this format. Um, it wouldn't have been bad if I had a way of uh, gaining a lot of card advantage in hand, but uh, traps don't usually do that. So I didn't want to play it right. for this, uh, just for this event. Uh, okay. I may put it back in in the future, but right now it wasn't uh, necessary. It's still useful. You can banish it. Well, not to, not to jump too far ahead, but are you siding it? Is it in your side deck then? It's not. I'm not, not playing it at all because... It's, it's yeah. good, but I have other cards for banishing, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, cool. Well, we'll get into those, as, I guess, next. Is that Ice Dragon's Prison I see there? It is. Uh, right after Olenoids, uh, just for the back row removal. You know, you need generic mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, Ice Dragon's Prison, uh, I'm sure everybody's picked up on the fact that it's a very powerful card in the format. So I think strong. it'll always continue to be a very powerful card. Um, uh, it's just, you can do so many things with this card it's a normal trap so you can always chain a paleo to it um you can steal an opponent's monster from the graveyard so a lot of the times you're stealing an eldritch whenever they try and summon it to your to their side of the field uh by mm -hmm. paying cost you just t you punish them you take it away from them or with uh the second effect you can banish a monster from both players fields that have the same type you can banish two eldritch and deal uh, a heavy blow on them because apparently there are several elvish players only playing two golden lord if they lose yep. golden lord <laughs> they're they're just done so um <laughs> yeah their cards are pretty just they're just so watered down if they don't have golden lord so uh, but more importantly it just deals a heavy blow against every single deck that you saw top the event recently the top eight uh the number two was paleo uh, number one, Drytron is probably the mm -hmm. least affected by Ice Dragon's Prison, uh, since a lot of their monsters can't be summoned um, from the graveyard. Uh, in that case, this would be sided out. Uh, but uh, other decks like Virtual World, you can banish their normal summon and something in the graveyard that would have gained them an advantage, and then shut down their turn. BAs, you can do the same thing. They're all fiends. Yeah. Uh, there's so many decks that this card hits. It's I, I'm surprised it's not a staple three of in every trap deck. Um, yeah. But there are people citing it and not meaning it. I, I think it's a generally it's a plus one. Sometimes it gives you a body to link off with as well. So it's just yeah. It was very interesting when it when it first came out. It was it was being slept on for for sure. But uh, it is now very it's got a high price tag now. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that I picked up my copies at like uh, seven dollars. Well, I think eight bucks. Yeah, seven or eight dollars, and now. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, they are an expensive playset to have. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, in uh, keeping on with the whole gaining card advantage, uh, Crackdown, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, uh, 
virtual world, you can just steal their normal summon. A lot of other decks, like Eldritch, they need the Eldritch on the field, so you steal the Eldritch. Um, they need uh, big boss monsters that they summon, um, you steal that. So uh, Crackdown just helps keep up and kill the opponents. Did you so. find yourself stealing with Crackdown more often than Toad? What do you, what did you find yourself stealing most with? Always Toad, just because you make Toad, the, uh, and these cards aren't as searchable. Um, but uh, then I guess second most was Ice Dragon's Prison because mm -hmm. you can trap trick into it um as w but most of the time i wasn't really stealing with ice dragon's prison and and i guess you could argue those 24 plus note cards should have been way more than that if i had actually written down all of the cards that i was banishing whenever i was stealing with ice dragon's prison to banish stuff um, and then uh we have imperial order i'm only playing four yeah. spell cards one of them is basically a trap card and then the other two i play before the other three I play before I ever draw into it most of the time so uh, Imperial Order really clutch won a few games um, I didn't die at all due to the fifth life point cost because I usually had enough card advantage to beat my opponent down uh, three judgments um, just yeah judgment ju no. judgment so powerful in this format because you can just say no to everything um, one other thing I noticed too like just jumping ahead a little bit you've only got two other cards that are limited in this entire deck right like so your, your deck is basically full power basically um yeah it's basically full power you're right uh there's one card in the side deck that's limited and that's about it so um three judgments <laughs> um this card actually is broken but it's actually not as amazing as you think it's only good going first and then it's kind of like it's well, they set up. It goes way down, like in a logarithmic right. scale or whatever. But uh, that's why you run through. You really want to see it going first. You you set it down to really kind of round out the rest of your traps down there. Mm -hmm. But definitely, because you're trying to go first with this deck, but you can go second. Um, then we have uh, Solemn Strike. Uh, mm -hmm. This is perfect for dealing with established boards. People try and do stuff to you. You say no, and uh, they try and say no, and then you say no to their no. <laughs> Um, trap trick I bumped it up to two not because I think it's that good a card but um, it's it's okay it, it gives you an extra copy of some of these cards mm -hmm. but more so I wanted to cushion myself whenever I played pot of desires I, I would rather banish these so <laughs> these are blank cards um, and so I, I figured I'd bump it up to two it wouldn't affect my ratio of opening up a swap frog that much uh, mm -hmm. and it would give me more uh, useless cards to banish off of Desires. Uh, so. Well, I see that you're running Desires. Did you thinking, like, just jumping ahead a little bit to when Pot of, uh, it was a Disparity that's coming out? Sure. Do you, are you think you're going to play that instead? I don't think so. It's not a plus one. Yep. This deck uh, mm -hmm. needs its extra deck. People like playing Extravagance in here. I don't think it's that good. I think uh, the way you win is by having three Toads, and if you banish one of them, you're reducing your chances of winning. True. Um, we have uh, uh, so two desires and one card of demise, three draw cards. Mm -hmm. I figured that's pretty good. Um, um, but yeah, card of demise. Uh, this card uh, <laughs> it won me a couple games because I was starting to fall behind, but I held on to it because I would draw it and I would have toad and I just need to keep making toad plays. And then uh, eventually I ran out of back row and I was like, I'm finally to a point where I don't need to keep summoning off of toad. Okay, card of demise, draw three back row. <laughs> So now my yeah. opponent's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they whittled down your card advantage like so much. What was in your hand? Like, oh no, draw yeah. three. And I held on to that. So, and they couldn't stop it because I had a toad on board usually. Um, <laughs> scapegoat. See, that's um, what I'm saying. So degenerate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, this card, this card won me probably six games uh, throughout the day just on its own. Demise or scapegoat? The scapegoat. Uh, okay. Demise maybe won me one game. Scapegoat won me like six uh, because I would draw it and I would set back row that disrupted my opponent and not see a monster. And but I would have this and pass, and then my back row would disrupt them, and then I'd summon the scapegoats, and then I'd go off, and my opponent could not get yeah. up with having scapegoat. Man, token token generation is just so broken right now with links. <laughs> I miss when this card was at three, but I understand mm -hmm. why it's at one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it needs to be a one. Uh, 
Well, let's uh, let's get into the side deck here. Okay. Um, so side deck evenly matched. Um, I don't. This card needs to be reprinted again and again and again. Like we need <laughs> this as a common. <laughs> it needs the MST reprint uh, treatment. Uh, they were supposed to put it. I think this one was supposed to be in the Charmer structure deck, and they took it out, which mm -hmm. really sucks. Because like we were all looking forward to common evenly matched, uh, cool it down, right? Like make it a seven dollar common instead of a twenty dollar ultra rare for the cheapest one. I swear, OCG gets the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, like that time that Konami was supposed to give us a maxi reprint in a structure deck, and they replaced it with like Shining Angel or something. Like yeah, <laughs> something stupid. <laughs> It's like, come on, you couldn't even give us a slightly better card than that. <laughs> you know, I get you don't want to give us that, but still. Um, but yeah, evenly matched for all the back row matchups, like Eldritch, for example. Um, other back rows, like Ultrageist and um, Frogs. I sighted it in several times, never once saw them. <laughs> all day, never saw them. Um, oh no. But... In theory, it's the best field wipe card because it deals with both monsters and spells and traps that are heavily established. Yeah, um, but that's just another thing to like important note as well. It, just because you side something doesn't mean you're gonna see it. So like you could side nine cards in and then not see any of them during the duel. Yep. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of theory into side decking, and we could probably do a whole nother video on just that alone. Um, yeah, for sure. But yeah, let's move on to the next card. Uh, Waking the Dragon. Um, it's great in a local setting, and here it actually won me a couple of games. Mm -hmm. It was good, but people weren't trying to wipe back row as much as I thought. And I think it's the fact really? that I was playing against control strategies and not um, monster, like, mm -hmm. break my board. But even when they sided, they didn't side in a bunch of board wipes? Uh, surprisingly not like a lot of people are doing cosmic cyclone just to like hit one single card and so people mm. told me the people that i talked to told me they were saving the cosmic for like my imperial order or crackdown or stuff they knew was safe to hit with like trap trip so mm -hmm. they weren't really trying to get hit by waking the dragon they were aware they were just going to try and play through all the other stuff mm -hmm. now mm. a cup i did play one prank kid player that guy, he was willing to, uh, like, because that's a monster-heavy combo strategy. He was willing to side in Harvey's Feather Duster and stuff. Um, and in our game three, I actually opened really bad. I opened um, Dupe Frog, Great Old Slime Jr., uh, Paleozoic Canadia, which I figured could stop his turn unless he opened the Quick Flight Fusion, and two mm -hmm. Waking the Dragons. I was like, well, this sucks. Uh, I hope he hits one of them. So I set three and set Gradle Slime, I think. Or, I don't remember. I think it might have been Duke Frog, because I usually set this over this uh, to get Swap Frog. Did he, did he just draw your Waking the Dragons? He did. He freaking opened Heavy Storm <laughs> or Harvey's Feather Duster and hit both of these and this. And so I said, oh, cool. Summon <laughs> Ultimate Falcon, uh, Chain Link 2. Summon uh, Last Warrior from another planet, Chain Link 1. Last Warrior tries to nuke my stuff. Nuke. Dupe Frog, Effect Search Swap Frog. Oh, hey, guess what? He's unaffected, so I keep both of these on the field. And he couldn't <laughs> do anything. <laughs> yep. I was right, though. He did have the Quick Play Fusion. So he Quick Play Fusioned into Rocket Ride and then tried to do stuff, but he couldn't because he mm -hmm. didn't draw his droplets to try and turn off the uh, Last Warrior from another planet. Such a shame. Yeah. Oh, well. He, cheese wins out with that card sometimes. <laughs> Uh, heavy Storm Duster, uh, I wanted to have back row removal for the back row strategies. It works, um, sort of. So, it, like, it it makes... Um, people don't seem to like to destroy spells and traps against Eldritch. I disagree mm -hmm. that that's a bad idea. Uh, I think that it forces them to use more of their resources whenever you Heavy Storm Duster them. Um, and against, like, Altergeist, it helped a lot as well. Against the Dark Magician matchup, it helped a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, Harpy's Feather Duster. So this yeah. is like, if I went first, I was siding this in. If I went second, I was siding this in. Um, and sometimes if I went first, I sided this in. If I felt like they had a lot of back row and I didn't mind drawing it later in the duel or right away. Uh, Gamma Seal. I expected mm -hmm. to see a lot more Dragoon. I saw zero Dragoon throughout the day. Really? Mm-hmm. 
Man, yeah, I would have expected to see a lot of Dragoon. I, yeah, I was like, well, this <clears throat> is good in theory. It's tur it gets rid of Dragoon. It turns off the virtual world Shenshen. Um, I'm sure people are summoning other stuff that's really annoying, and it turns that off too. So I figured I would side three of it. I hmm. did not need it pretty much at all. I, I think I use I sided it in against both of my zoo matchups just so that I could get rid of uh, Zeus in case they Zeus. And I I don't know, uh, but it never <laughs> came up. Okay, yeah, it's a good side. It's a good side. <laughs> yep. Um, so here's the fun conversation. Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion and Skullmeister. Um, so right now in the meta, like I mentioned, there's a lot of Eldritch and there's a lot of graveyard stuff going on as always. Um, mm -hmm. My Ice Dragon's Prison should be able to take care of a lot of it, but Eldritch are spells and traps. Um, so we have Ghost Spell and Skullmeister. Which one's better? Um, I opted for Skullmeister because you want to be able to stop the Eldritch stuff as soon as it activates in the graveyard. You want to stop every single one of them um, without discrimination. You don't need to stop any of the on-field effects most of the time because they don't hurt you that bad. So Ghost mm -hmm. Spell uh, was reduced to one. I was doing two and two at first, but this is more useful, uh, the Skullmeister. But Ghost Spell I kept at one because it can also hit other stuff, such as in Zoo. You can stop Pot of Abris or Zodiac, Chocanine, or Tiger mm -hmm. Mortar, um, or Combo. And you can also stop uh, Dogmatica with their Nadir Servant because it can add from Grave to Hand. So you can negate the Nadir Servant and put them behind. Um, and Skullmeister, it just stops so many more things um, that it needed to be a three of. Uh, right now, this is probably as good as uh, Ash Blossom in the meta as how good of a hand trap it is. So, um, uh, that that was part of the thinking too. This is good yeah. against Dino as well. Turn negate mm -hmm. the um, the miscellaneous source and graveyard effect, uh, and now they don't special summon from the grave. Uh, even though all their stuff on the field is protected, like Ovi Raptor is protected from Ash. Um, Ovi uh, Miscellaneous isn't protected from Ash, and neither is uh, mm -hmm. Skullmeister. And the baby's activating the grave too, so you can hit Skullmeister. And the nice thing about it is, this is an old school hand trap, so it doesn't have that hard once per turn restriction. So you can open three if you uh... use all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Where's I Belle? bet you drop it too. People are like, wait, what card? Like, right? What's that? <laughs> and then Bell over here, she's being like new school. She new school. She thinks this is cool to say you can only use this effect once per turn. Like, oh no, yeah. it'd be the end of the world if you could use it more than once. You know? <laughs> Extra deck. Um, Extra deck. The, there's the boy. Three of him. We got him at three. You should play him at three. Um, <laughs> you're wrong if you're you need not two. Three. <laughs> <laughs> um, Crumba Logos. This one's an interesting one. Um, mm -hmm. So I used this a couple of times during the tournament. So once per turn, you can detach a material and then target one other face-up card on the field. While he's on the field and the, that target is on the field, then that target's effects are negated. Also, while that target's on the field, uh, cards with their same name uh, and that card cannot activate their effects. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that basically you lock your opponent out of doing stuff. So there was one guy who was playing um, Dogmatica, and I literally had nothing in my main deck that could beat over his Ecclesia, and then mm -hmm. Toad can't beat over it, and I didn't have the resources to like go Boral Load to take it or just do something else because my extra yeah you got to put a lot into that yeah I couldn't really out it and I was like that's annoying but I was like wait time for my spicy tech let me turn it off <laughs> so i turned it <laughs> off because <laughs> i didn't have the imperm at the time either so i was like oh i'll just turn it off with crumble logos and then beat over it so that worked <laughs> and then uh for our links we got our mm -hmm. oh sorry uh we missed with the last uh rank two um uh, anima <laughs> lacaris quick effect yeah i was gonna say i thought you were, i thought you loved playing that card <sighs> oh god i love this card yeah, it's uh, people always question it when they see it. They're like, "Really, you're playing that?" I'm like, "It's the best. It's the second best card in the extra deck." So <laughs> it's like Toad is the best, and then this um, because you can make it with a Paleo and then some frogs, but it's a quick effect Dryden, so it helps you control the field just as much mm -hmm. as uh, Toad does. But when a trap card goes to the graveyard, you can look at the top card of the deck. If it's a trap, you get a free card, and if not, it goes to the graveyard, which keeps your advantage. Time, yeah, gives you advantage. 
so he's just very strong. The fact that it's unaffected by monster effects just means that it's even harder for your opponent to stop. I actually, <laughs> I had one opponent, not in this event, but in a previous event, he tried to ghost ogre this card, and I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can activate. Go ahead and activate. Go for it, dude. <laughs> he's oh, just like, so funny. okay. Uh, I was like, all right, battle phase. He's like, your monster's gone. I was like, uh, is it though? It's unaffected by monster effects. You know, with as many jokes as we make about Yu Gi Oh players not reading the Yu Gi Oh cards, I will say when every card is as lengthy as this in today's game, you don't want to read all the cards. <laughs> They're so long. Yeah, I agree. Um, Lynx, we have Lynx Spider. Um, uh, this is uh, partially for Scapegoat, but it's a little more so for the Paleos. There are times where I need to turn the Paleo into an effect monster because they mm -hmm. special summon themselves as a normal monster. So the Lynx Spider is there just for that. Well, that and Scapegoat. Uh, Link Rebo, again, Scapegoat. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, um, it's there for background removal. It doesn't come up much. Um, the fact that it has 1900 attack, that came up once actually and won me a match because I was able to link into it and then attack for 50 damage over an 1850 monster and then time was called. <laughs> oh, oh, how yeah. many times was time called on you during this event? Because oh. this went this went like 14 hours. That's a long time. I think I went into time, let me see, five times. I went into time five times. So half the time I was going into time which you could argue is a reason to side deck stuff that burns your opponent and i considered mm -hmm. side decking something like secret barrel going into uh game three i think it's called secret yeah if it's barrel. gonna if it's gonna be that common of an occurrence yeah secret barrel that's the perfect card uh, inflict 200 mm -hmm. damage to your opponent for each card in their hand and for each card they control so you just go set pass and then they have like six cards at least and you do 1200 damage you know so right. especially if there's like five seconds left in the duel and you finally got your turn you go set pass <laughs> and then your opponent draws and you're like sake <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i th i considered it it might go into the side i'm not sure yet but there, there you go guys a spicy tech idea for going in got that spicy traps. cheap tech because <laughs> it's trap trickable and it burns and it does an okay amount of damage um, sometimes yeah. more than Firecracker, which I don't know if you guys are aware of Firecracker. But it's a hand trap that is good for going at a time. Oh, is it two words? It's two words, yeah. Um, quick effect. You can discard this card, inflict a thousand damage to your opponent, and if you do, skip your next draw phase. So yep. people just side that for going at a time. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't matter. You don't have, you're not going to have another draw phase. Yeah, you have five seconds left in the duel. Who cares if you skip your draw <laughs> phase? <laughs> Okay, so back to the extra deck. Um, Lake Karibo on Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, like I said, I did 50 damage for with an attack, but it's also sure. partially for Scapegoat. Because you make Link Karibo, and then you link off a Scapegoat and Link Karibo into Nightmare Phoenix. Then you can bring back your Link Karibo from the graveyard. Um, but I usually don't do that play. It's only if I've used the IP Master Reina already that I do that. Mm. And then usually I have to use the... Uh, Toad or uh, Ronan Toten to make a fourth body in order to go into a Link Four. Um, okay. IP you can use two uh, scapegoats to make it, so that makes it a lot easier. Two scapegoats and then one scapegoat in the Link Rebo and one scapegoat in the Link Spider. It helps you make Avermax, um, so that's pretty nice. Um, some you, sometimes you can save the Link Spider and just do Link Spider, Link Rebo, and a Goat into Phoenix underneath IP, and then these two can both go into Avermax. Mm -hmm. uh, Avermax uh, put in some work, <laughs> so Boral Sword because um, this deck can OTK. If you, I've explained it before in that Frog profile. If you end on Toad, that's an OTK. You can make Boral Sword with the cards they have left over, and then attack with Toad. Switch him to defense and attack twice with Boral Sword, and you have negate yep. in case they try and stop you. Um, Avermax, uh, this card's very good against. Uh, BA, they can't really out this half the time, and all the trap. Well, honestly, matchups... anything, anything with a big body is hard for BA to really tackle because if they can't stop you from getting to that point in the first place, then they're kind of screwed. Yeah, I know some BA are playing like Dragoon, but Dragoon just dies to Avermax. So, yeah. uh, 
Well, sometimes. It, it really depends. Because they can negate his effect to gain attack, and then he won't die. Uh, and, but he will be destroyed in battle. It, it's, it's if you usually summon him and protect him with some back row. Mm -hmm. um, Borlo Dragon, uh, this card came up a lot. Uh, I keep stealing cards that my opponents... Oh, yeah. I, I didn't do... Um, I maybe did one card steal with Borolode out of all those note cards, um, but it, it it comes up sometimes. <laughs> I guess uh, Toad and Ice Dragon's Prison and Crackdown aren't the only ways to steal. <laughs> but yeah, Jeez, man, play with your own cards. He's Mr. Steal Your Girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, when life gives you lemons, you chuck those lemons in the trash because lemonade's too bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Just like every other Yu-Gi-Oh player that played against you. <laughs> basically oh man well I, this was a great deck profile um do you have any kind of parting words of wisdom for anyone thinking they want to try and get into this degenerate playstyle? <laughs> um formats change um people don't so decks don't so just play the person uh learn their play style as you're playing against them it might cost you a game one uh, but you'll eventually figure out their strategies and their patterns and then be able to outplay them this is kind of uh, a game of chess and a lot of decks they have the same strategy and if you figure out that where to break the tempo then you can beat the other decks cool all right guys well thanks for checking out the video and i'll uh, keep you updated on the next one peace thank you anti-meta <laughs>